What is up you guys? In this one, we will build a user management app using React as front-end and Redis, Node.js and Express as back-end. Now for Redis, we will be using Redis Cloud for database hosting, Redis JSON to post, update and fetch JSONs, Redis search to query and perform full text searches, and Redis Ohm for object mapping, making Redis's workflow seamless and Redis modules easy to work with. The Redis CLI will also be used to monitor database changes in real time, as well as running Redis search commands. This video is in no way a tutorial for front-end design. We will assume that front-end code is already given, where ours was highly inspired from MD Bootstrap website. So I'll be leaving the link in the description section below for the interested viewer. Next, as a giveaway, I will also leave a link in the description section below to sign up to Redis Cloud, where you can get a chance to win a Tesla Model 3. Right. Now before we get into the user management app, and for those that are getting into the back-end world, let's first define what a database actually is. A database is a structured collection of data that is stored and retrieved electronically through a computer system. So in other words, it could be seen as a place where we can store data in an organized manner. Having defined a database, one might wonder, what is Redis? Well, Redis is an in-memory multimodal database which is known for its sub-millisecond latency and was invented in 2009 with the philosophy that a cache can be seen as a durable data store. Redis, which stands for Remote Dictionary Server, has revolutionized databases in the way we think of it. You know, it's not just reading and writing on the database that goes on behind the scenes. Contrary to the classical ways databases work, Redis creates a system where data is always read or updated from the main computer memory and supports cool stuff like backups and snapshots. Redis, unlike NoSQL databases such as MongoDB and PostgreSQL, stores data in the main memory of the server rather than on hard disks or solid state drives. This results in faster read and write operations which in turn leads to faster response times and lower latency. So without further ado, let's dive deeper into how to use all of Redis's features like Redis JSON, Redis Cloud, Redis Ohm, and Redis Search through the Redis CLI and build this user management app. So let's get started. Right, so in this video, I'm not going to focus on the front end. Here's the structure that I have so far. So I've got the front end here, right? And this is VS Code opened on the front end. This is the basic JavaScript with JS running. I'm going to be attaching this on my website. So the first thing you want to do is run npm install. You might get some vulnerabilities, so you'd want to run this. To address all issues, run this, npm audit. Right, so once done, all you have to do is run an npm start so that your front end runs on local host. And there you go. This is what I have as front end. I've got enter user, the name, the email. Of course, you can add much more fields. And then once added, the users will show here on the table thanks to the back end, right? So that's what we have for the front end. It's running. And now let's focus on the back end. Let's create a new folder here. Let's call it Node Redis. And let's open VS Code in Node Redis. That is, here's another instance of VS Code running in Node Redis. Once you've got that in the same directory, go to Terminal and type down npm init y. This adds packages.json. Right here, you will see all the dependencies installed and so forth. Now, over here, just type in type module using this for Redis. Once that's done, let's go ahead and install the following packages. Express, Nodemon, or the server, um, Course, and Redis OM, which will be a layer on top of Redis JSON and Redis Search. So give that some time. Once done, you will see the dependencies or the packages added here. Now, let's go ahead and create a source folder src and within the source folder let's create a file called let's create our index.js and now in index.js we're going to have to import express from Redis, and also we're going to use course as well note that course is acronym for 
cross-origin resource sharing. It's a method that allows or restricts requested resources on a web server based on the location of the HTTP request. In other words, course should be added so that the front end could properly communicate with your back end. So let's create our app, const app equal express. Let's use, first of all, express.json. We're going to be packing our records in JSON formats. And for course, we're going to run course we have to specify the origin since we're running on local host 3000. So this is important. Copy paste this HTTP here. You'd want to listen on some other port for the back end. Let's say 8000. Now app.use, you're going to see it a lot in Node.js. It's just a way to bind application level middleware to an instance of the app object. So here we used, for example, express JSON, because that's what we're going to as formats and course for proper communication of front end and back end. Now, one more thing before we get going is that we have to return to package.json and modify it so that um, our script starts node mod. That's a really handy way of you know dealing with back end functionalities. And I find it really nice when you know working with Redis. Okay, since that's done. Also, since we're going to have to run npm to start, this has to be changed to start. So that's about it. Let's check if our backend is running properly. So npm start, starting node mod, going back here to local host 8000. Okay, cannot get, right. So now we didn't, we didn't do anything with the backend. So that's, that message so far is normal. So what we're going to do right now is add some client functionalities. And that's where we're going to use Redis Cloud. You could also use Docker, right? But I find Redis Cloud to be very, very, Handy. So what we're going to do first is go to Redis Cloud. I'll be leaving the link in the description section below. Also, if you use the, the link in the description section below, you'll get a chance to win a Tesla Model A3. Now, since I've got an account, I'll just, you know, log into it. So this is what I've got so far. I've got a test DB here. Got, this is how my DB looks like so far, my Redis database. I also got some useful metrics to show you the number of um, the latency the key is created, so I've got so far eight keys. Um, I'm just going to delete my database so far because I'm going to show you how to create one. Go to new database, give your database a name. Let's say Redis DB. Um, right here, you have to select the modules. We're going to be running on JSON and Redis search. Redis JSON and Redis search. Okay, down here, all seems to be good. So let's activate the database and we've got a public endpoint. This is what we're going to be using to connect to our Redis cloud server. So what we're going to do here is import, since we're using client functionalities, client from Redis OM. And since we're here, we're also going to be using repository um, from Redis OM. This enables us to actually properly define our JSONs that we're going to save in the database. So to connect to your Redis database, first let's create a client that is new client like this. And let's await following uh, connection. As you can see here in the description, we need to enter a, a URL in the form of a string. Now this has the following format, Redis, colon, forward slash, forward slash, username, password, at endpoint. Now, since I've got my endpoint, I'm going to copy paste this guy. What I still need is the, my username and my password. Now, don't use this password down here, okay? We're not going to use this password. Instead, we're going to have to go to data access control right here. And I'm going to delete this guy because I used it previously. And I'm going to delete this guy as well. Now let's go to roles and add a new role. So here is where we're going to enable admin access. Over here, let's give a name, call it admin. Now select databases. This is the database that we just created right here. Right here for the Redis ACL, let's choose full access and tick save role. Next, let's go to users, add a new user. Call this Ahmed Benzi. And I'm going to give it a password. Uh, let's say pizza, one, two, three, four, five, six. But hold on a second. Oh, okay. You need a special character. I'll do pizza underscore one, two, three, four, five, six. Likewise here. And there you go. You might see pending here. Here it's completed. It's active. You might see pending here. Just refresh your page. Just give it a minute or two and it's active. Okay. 
So going back here, I've got the username that is Ahmed Bezzi. And I've got the password that is pizza underscore one, two, three, four, five, six, save. All looks good. Now let me do a mistake here. There you go. <laughs> um, in case you enter a wrong URL, that is you do the mistake over here. Nodemon is going to, well, actually it's going to throw an error telling you app crashed, waiting for file changes before starting. And if you go right here, you will see an error and your local host on 8000 will stop. Correcting this, this is the advantage of Nodemon. It's very dynamic. Um, save, it's back up and running, okay? Now, let's define how our data is going to be stored in the database. That's very important. So we're going to follow a standard um, way of doing stuff. So within the source, let's create a folder, call it schema. And within schema, let's create a JavaScript file and call it user.schema.js. Now over here, I'm going to import two things from, from Redis OM. I'm going to import entity and schema. Now over here, let's create a class called user for each this is for each user I'm going to add over here. You need a number, which is automatic, so it's not part of the database. It's just, you know, for ordering stuff. A name, an email, so we need the name, we need an email and an action, whether it's act. So the, the, the important stuff are name and email. We're also going to be indicating if the user is active or not. So the user is going to extend entity called to JSON, right? This is all pretty standard, so don't worry about this. What's really important here is what's, what we're going to type down here. The name, we'll get it from this dot name from the front end. So in the front end, you should have a use state for each of the variables we're including. That is name and email. You should have those. So here's this dot name, and for email, you need a this dot email, okay? Now active is also this, dot active. At the same time, you should be filling up in parallel the following user schema. So your name is of type string, right? Your email is this likewise type string, okay? And active is going to be of type boolean, so true or false. And last but not least, just indicate that the data structure is JSON. Now to integrate all this in our index.js, we need to include it. So we'll go, we're going to have to add import user schema from this guy, it's auto-completed. And then, oh, app, dot, uh, app crashed. Going back here, there's one thing we still didn't enter, which is the ID. And this is automatically filled in the front end. So we don't need to really worry about this. Here, remove the comma. So the app crashed over here. Um, think you should add .js, save. Ah, oh, there you go. So far, so good. We have, let's, let's say the, the JSON structure right here. And so now in index.js, we need to create a user repository in order to, you know, bind the index.js with the user.schema, with the schema that we have. The user schema client, this is how Redis Cloud gets connected to our schema. It's a way to tell it, okay, this is the schema that we're going to use. And next, we're going to have to await user repository drop index as such. And as well, we're going to have to create an index as such. And last but not least, we're going to have to get, so app.get. And this, you can call it whatever you want. Let's call it forward slash users. It's where we're going to store all the JSONs and open a sync request response, the usual, what else? Uh, so we're going to send and await user repository dot search dot return all so that we see what we have in the back end and the uh, Redis database. As you can see, it's empty. It's empty since we didn't store anything so far. It's the front end, it's the back end. So right now we have the front end and the back end working coherently with each other. Now we're ready to add some functionalities. That is take from the front end and store in the back end. So first let's do a put functionality. So this is a post, app.post. We're working in users. So as we did in app.get, a sync, quest, response. So a user is going to be from user repository dot 
create, we're going to have to create an entity first of all, right? And now we're going to have to read from the front end over here and give it to the back end right here. So we're going to have to read the user.name. Right now I'm going to leave them empty and I'm going to show you how to fill them up. So we need the username, we need the user email, we need the user if it's initially we're going to, you know, initialize this to false as we need to tick it in the front end to activate it to true. And for the user ID, well, we're going to have to await user repository dot save user only when it's saved. Finally, I will send the user to the Redis database. Now those two, how do we get it? We go back to the front end and as you can see here, we've got name and we've got email. It's over here. You have to make sure that in your front end, you define those appropriately, name and email, okay? And down where you retrieve it, you should have your user.name and user.email accordingly, which are linked to the front end over here. So if I enter here, Ahmad and Ahmad Bazi at um, gmail.com, this is where we're going to save it. So over here, we've got request.body.name and request.body.email. Save this and let's check if it's working properly. So we're going to click add. So we seem to have a problem. So if we inspect a bit, go to network, XHR, click add. There you go. There's an error, which I have done, I think. This might, yeah, there you go. Access to fetch uh, port 8000 from port 3000 has been blocked by course policy. Access control allow origin. Okay. I think I know why. So if we go back to the code, we can resolve this issue by adding our own proxy. So this could be done over here, app.use. So you're going to expect a re response and next as such. So right here, res.header pass access dash control dash allow dash origin and asterisk, okay? Then go, then do next as such. If we go back to the code, click add. There you go, it's added. This you might encounter. Okay, we have added the user. There you go. If we go to the database, we refresh this. And there you go. Here's the random ID, my name, my email, and active to false. Now, as you might see, those, you know, those actions are a dummy for the moment. They do have some functionality on the front end. If I click delete, it goes away but not on the back end. If I refresh the back end, it's still there. And even more, if I refresh the front end again, since it's reading from the back end, yeah, it's not deleted. So we don't have deleting functionality so far, neither do we have updating functionality so far. So if I click tick over here, it's poor active, it's still false. So let's create an update functionality. This is from the tick, okay? So as we did users, ID, a sync method for request and response. We're going to have to fetch the user, first of all. So user repository dot fetch, and we're going to re request params.id as such. And now we're going to, you know, we're going to have to read this field over here. And this one is from the request.body.active we're going to have to put it in user dot active. Okay. So user active as such. Okay. And now after this is set, we're going to save the user. So save it in the repository, pass it the user and send finally the user as such. So now if I do this, this guy should be set to true. Once I refresh, there you go. And if I put it back to false, there you go. So we have updating functionality so far. Last but not least, let's do some deleting functionalities. It means that here we should, if, if I click X, and I click OK, this guy should be deleted, whereas it's not. And if I refresh here, it's still there. So how do we do this? Simply call app.delete users forward slash ID, then async request response as such. And over here, we're going to remove this ID, all controlled by the ID, uh, as such. Okay. Finally, we're going to send a null field. So far, if I do this, so now if I delete, refresh, it's gone. 
even if I refresh here, it's also gone. Okay. So now let's try to add multiple users. See how this goes. So ahmadbezi at gmail.com. Add, say, Mike Tyson. Mike.tyson at gmail.com. Uh, who else? Marwan Musa. Marwan.musa at gmail.com. There you go. Who else? Um, let's do John Smith. John Smith, all of them at gmail.com. And what happens if I don't enter an email here? It warns me that please send an at. So the front end is expecting an email over here. Enter this guy twice. Okay, so here I've got four users. There you go. Let's check John Smith to true. There you go. John Smith is true. The rest is false. Um, let's delete John Smith. Deleted. Delete Marwan Musa. Also deleted. Let's delete Ahmed Bazi. Deleted. Let's set Mike Tyson true and let's delete Mike Tyson so that we have an empty database. Okay, good. Now let's check in some Redis CLI functionality. I'm going to open a terminal here, a new terminal. So we have both terminals right here. This guy is still running. And I'm going to install Redis CLI. I already have it, so this might not take a lot of time. Now this is telling me here to install it, run brew install Redis. So let's do that. As you can see, since I got it, warning Redis is already installed and up to date. So I can run Redis-CLI and I'm on the CLI of Redis's database, but on the local port 6379, which doesn't interest me at all. Now connect to our database, we need to pass in some additional arguments. So I think the proper way to do this is according to Redis CLI documentation is something like this. So let's go Redis-CLI, pass in the endpoint of this and voila, there you go. Now to test if this is actually working, you can run a ping that's it, and you get a pong. So all good. You can also run something like monitor as such. And right here, if I go ahead and add John Smith, there you go, it's added. This is pretty cool, this is really cool. It gives you an idea of how the database is performing in real time. If I go ahead and add Ahmad Bazi again, there you go, it's added. If I update, there you go, it's updated. Update again. Actually, let me minimize this guy right here to show you <laughs> this in real time. So add, there you go, delete, Okay, it's unlinked right now. Update, 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 update. There you go, real time. Delete, okay, delete. There you go, empty database. Okay, add again and delete. This is really cool. This is why I like Redis CLI. It shows you stuff in real time. Now, this is one important feature of the Redis CLI. Another one is that you can actually run Redis search on it. For those who don't know, Redis search is big. It's it's huge. And I believe one of Redis's signatures is based on Redis search. Redis search is a robust indexing, querying, and full text search engine for Redis that is offered both on premises and as a managed cloud service. It makes a lot of indexing, searching, sorting, ranking, a lot of querying stuff on Redis database. So easy and way faster than other relational type database programming languages. So we're connected again to our database using this command that we executed previously. Um, and let me expand as such. Okay, so the thing here to mention is very important. You can either create your own new database, that is your own new schema, you define a new schema and you link it via an index to your database, or you can connect an already existing schema, which is fascinating. And this is what I want to show you here, is that you make use of the schema you already have. So that being said, we go and do the ft.create as if we're creating a new uh, database, but I'm passing it the in index, specifying JSON. And here is where we're going to make use of our already created schema. So we go user, since we've used user in our schema, and we pass schema as such, then the attributes that we have right here. That is 
the name, which is text. Email is also text. And active. I didn't find Boolean in the documentation. So I'll go ahead and do numeric as such. Hit enter and we have an OK right here. Let me zoom in. So right now to make sure everything is working. Actually, let's run keys star. It's empty. Let's go back here and add some data. Ahmed Bezi, Ahmed Bezi at gmail.com. Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson at gmail.com. Um, John Smith as well. Right. So they're here. Okay. Run keys again. And here you have the users. Um, to make sure that it is properly linked, you go ft.search my index star. And there you have it. All the data right here. If I go ahead, let's say, and update and run this again, there you have it. True. Okay. Um, now, this is one way of searching using Redis search. However, Redis ohm makes this trivial. You can simply query the JSON without much raw command knowledge. In other words, you can actually do this off the code that we have right here. We're using Redis Ohm. All you have to do is first make use of our user repository that we have right here. So go down here, user repository dot search as such. So we're searching dot here. You pass the attributes, for example, where let's say we want to search the name and which is equal to Ahmed Bazi as such. And we want to return all. This is a query, but please make sure since this is a sync, we want to await and return this guy in a result as such. Then console.log this result. And let's see here what we have. So save. And there you go. Here's your user. As simple as this just one line of code. So here, this is an array. We turn the first entry. There you go. You want to end index different attributes. So dot name dot email and dot let's say active. There you go. Let's say we change the active back to false. There you go. So this is the base that you need to know to leverage Redis search functionality via Redis own. Right. So I also want to introduce you to Redis Insight, which is a very beautiful desktop GUI graphical user interface, which makes the whole Redis experience much more pleasant, beautiful, and you can see your Redis real time status. In other words, you can see your keys, you can see your current CPU processing status, database size. You can also use the Redis CLI through this Redis Insight. It even has a CLI built inside itself, meaning that you really don't need to download Redis CLI locally on your machine, thanks to Redis Insight. It just makes the whole experience much more smoother and easier for your workflow. So to get started, let's fill out the following information. My business email is buzzyabs at gmail.com. I enter my phone number. Once everything is filled up, I'm going to hit download. And it's going to download, um, if you're on a Mac, a .dmg file. Once that's done, you can install Redis Insight locally then open it. And there you go. This is Redis Insight installed on your machine. Now to get started, hit on add Redis database. And over here, as you can see, we need some info that is related to your database. For example, you need the username, password, host, and port. So I'll just copy those off of this URL. So this is my host. This guy's my port and the database alias, which we called, I think, Redis DB. Once done, hit add database. There you have everything we have entered so far. So as you can see, there's Mike Tyson here, is here or here, got a second JSON. Ahmed Bazi, which is here. Cool thing here is that you can also modify fields. So for example, if I set this to false, you can see here it's uh, true, refresh, it's false. You can also modify your email. For example, I remove the dot, enter. There you go, there you go. Let's say we add over here, John Smith, refresh. There you go. Where is John Smith? Right here. Let's set this guy to true. Back here, it's ticked. Okay, so this makes it really easy for you to update, modify, create uh, new records. You can also see here the number of connected clients, the total number of keys, three, current size of the database, 2.514 megabytes, and the CPU speed. 
Um, one thing also worth noting is the CLI. So actually you have some CLI functionality over here. It's really, really um, nice. You don't need to download Redis CLI locally. All you have to do is execute it on this part. Okay, so that's all for this video. And this one, our main focus was on the back end of this user management app. We showed you how to build a crude app back end with full functionality of putting, updating, and deleting using Redis OM, Redis Search, Redis JSON. And we showed you how to work with Redis CLI, how to monitor stuff and how to add records to your database and search using Redis search on the Redis CLI. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions whatsoever, kindly leave a comment down in the comment section below. I'll make sure I'll get to it as soon as possible. I'll see you then.